Man, let me tell y'all something. Alabama Heat is nothing to play with, I swear. I was just playing open gym earlier today. Man, when I say after about five, six games, I had to get up out of there, man. It is hot. I tell you, if you don't like the heat, do not come down here. But anyway, what's up? More to the game, and I'm putting y'all on game. Today, we got an informative video for all my hoopers out there. I'm going to be letting you guys know everything a rookie needs to know if they're going to play overseas basketball. First thing you got to know is that college is over. The way overseas basketball work is nothing like college. Obviously, it's a basketball. It's 10 players. You're trying to put a ball in a hoop. You're trying to stop other teams from the ball in a hoop. But that's about it. When the game of basketball turns into a business, it's, it's completely different. Also, to know what that is, what you did in college, don't mean anything now. It's going to be guys that played at this high major school, this low major school, this D2, D3, NAIA school, and they don't care about what you did in college once you get on your team. It's about what you can do for them then. All your accolades, how your coach treated you in college, the system y'all ran, all that goes right out the window. Like, forget about it. It was cool, but it's over. Leaving the past. For real. It's done. So if you go overseas and you're on a team with this dude, he said he went to, oh, I went to this college. I did this and that. Man, I'm telling you, all that don't mean nothing. Because it's survival over there, you got to be built different mentally and physically. Because it's not like you got the same trainers and everything unless you're at the highest, highest level probably. Like, it's just a totally different ball game. Like, different. Next thing you got to know when you go over there is to never count pockets. Dudes going to say they make this, say they make that. You might make more, you might make less. Don't worry about none of that. All you need to worry about is the money that you're making and the money that you're trying to make. What the next man make ain't got nothing to do with you. So don't even ask, to be honest with you. Just focus on you. Because if you're worried about what this person making, you think you're like contributing more or you better than them or blah, blah. Like I said, this is not college. Just because you are this and that, that doesn't mean this and that. It's about a business. You sign a contract, you do your job, you go on to the next situation or come back to the team or whatever. That has nothing to do with the next man. So focus on you and focus on your pockets. That's it. Definitely another important thing to know is not on your agent. It's on you to get where you're trying to go. Your agent is obviously going to sell you, try to put you in the best positions. If you got these connections, that can help you out. He sent this player here, there, blah, blah. Like, that's cool. That's great. You want that. But at the end of the day, what matters is how you produce, how you perform. That's how you get better contracts. That's how you play for more money. That's how you play in better countries. All the other stuff don't matter. Oh, he got this agent. He signed over here. He signed. Bro, if you can hoop, you will get what you want out of this business. If you're not producing... If you are not producing, do not be pointing your finger at agents to why you're not getting this deal, you're not getting that deal. You have to produce to get the better contracts at the end of the day. Will a clouded up agent help you more than someone that's not clouded up? Yeah, when all things are even. But if you ain't doing nothing in this country and there's a guy with an agent that has no clout, whatever, is doing great in this country, he's going to get the job before you get a job. They don't care about that agent in his pockets. They care about putting the best product on the floor. And that means putting the best players on their team. And if you're not like that, then don't be worried about your agent trying to get you here and there. Like, you got to produce. It is what it is. You got to split business and basketball. When you're playing basketball, you're locked in. You've been doing this all your life. You're good to go. You love the game. It's fun. When it's something business-wise that's going on, hopefully you can just put that on your agent. Sometimes you have to get involved depending on the situation, but hopefully you just put it on your agent and you just let that be on the other side. It should not affect your performance on the court, what you got going on business-wise with the team or what you're trying to do in other avenues. Like You have to split it. You got business, basketball, and you're in the middle. When you're playing basketball, you are over here. When you worry about the business, you are over here. Your agent is over there. LeBron said, keep the main thing, the main thing, the Lonzo Ball. And that's for real. As long as you focus on hooping, you let your agent handle the business stuff, you'll be fine. Since we're on the topic of agents and the business of basketball, let me tell you this here. Contract terminology is key. 
I don't care what they say they're going to do. I don't care what they said they did. What that contract says is the only thing that matters. If they say they're going to pay you this amount of money, but it's not in the contract, then you shouldn't be expecting to get this amount of money. If they say they're going to offer you these meals, this car, or whatever, and it's not in the contract written down, forget about it. That's dead. Over with. If they do it, that's great, but you shouldn't even be expecting that because that's not what you signed up for. If you have an injury and there's no terminology in your contract that discusses injuries, then it's not a whole lot you can expect because there's nothing in the contract saying what to do You know, at that time. I had a situation like that with my first contract. Like, there's really no injury provision to know what happens. So, it's, it is what it is at the end of the day. Hopefully, try to get as much money as possible out of the deal if they would do that. But if it's not in the contract, it's really nothing you can do towards that. So, the only thing you can hold a team accountable to is the contract. So, whatever you got questions about, like, any type of situations arise, if it's not in the contract, good luck. Because that's all you got to help you. And this brings me to my second to last point. Is that leverage is everything. Leverage is basically your ability to affect change or make change. And your leverage as a professional basketball player is your importance to your team. If you are a guy that is producing, he's a great citizen and doing all the right things, the team needs you. Obviously, you have more power to affect change around your situation than the guy that's on a contract. They're really trying to get rid of him. He fit to be sent home any day now. Like how you perform on that court is all you really have in terms of leverage. If they need you, that's your power. If they don't need you, don't expect to have any power in your situation. That's really all you got when you go into these foreign countries, thousands of miles away from home. Like, you're important to that team. Outside of that, you're really just out there by yourself at the end of the day. And to wrap it up, my last point is that you are blessed. If you are able to play professional basketball in any country, get paid to do what you love, something you've probably been working towards since you was a youngin', you were blessed. Don't forget that. Because a lot of the business side of basketball will, will make you sometimes question your love for the game. But at the end of the day, if you're making money doing this and it's enough money to where you can sustain this lifestyle, you're blessed, man. People will kill to have the opportunity that you have. There's guys that were great at basketball. They made a mistake here or there. And they never even sniffed a chance to play professional basketball. But you were blessed enough to get through all the obstacles and get to the point where you're a professional basketball player. So never forget that. This is a blessing and a privilege. Never forget it. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed everything I had to say. I tried to put y'all on game once again. If there's any other questions, any hoopers out there got, or any fans of the sport got about how the whole overseas basketball works, you know, anything, just hit me up in the comments. Hit us up on the More to the Game page, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that. Just, just hit us up. Hit me up. And we'll be back next time.